King Mongkut ascended the Siamese throne, he was severely threatened by the neighboring states. The colonial powers of Britain and France had already advanced into territories which originally belonged to the Siamese sphere of influence. Mongkut and his successor Chulalongkorn, Rama V, recognized this situation and tried to strengthen the defense forces of Siam by modernization to absorb Western scientific and technical achievements, thus avoiding colonization. The two monarchs, who ruled in this epoch, were the first with Western formation. King Mongkut had lived 26 years as a wandering monk and later as an abbot of what Bawaniwet Vihara. He was not only skilled in the traditional culture and Buddhist sciences of Siam, but he had also dealt extensively with modern Western science, drawing on the knowledge of European missionaries and his correspondence with Western leaders and the Pope. He was the first Siamese monarch to speak English. The colonial encroachment in the 1880s in Burma to the west by the British Empire and Indochina to the east by the French caused anxiety amongst the Siamese elites, including the British-educated Prince Prisdang, who put forward a proposal alongside 11 other senior dignitaries to King Chulalongkorn to strengthen Siamese institutions following the European model. Some of these reforms reflect need to keep up with European convention of liberal statecraft and justice to maintain legitimacy. Prisdang suggested that the following reforms should be carried out. One dot change the absolute monarchy to a constitutional monarchy. Two dot establish a cabinet system or ministerial government. Three dot distribute power to the heads of departments. Four dot promulgate a law of royal succession. 5. Dot change the payment system for the bureaucracy from the 6. Dot commission system to a salary system. 7. Dot promote equality under the law. 8. Dot reform the legal system on the Western model. 9. Dot promote freedom of speech and 10. Dot establish a merit system for the bureaucracy. The majority of these reforms were implemented decades after Chulalongkorn's death. As early as 1855, John Boring, the British governor in Hong Kong, appeared on a warship at the mouth of the Chow Phraya River. Under the influence of Britain's achievements in neighboring Burma, King Mongkut signed the so-called Boring Treaty, which abolished the royal foreign trade monopoly, abolished import duties, and granted Britain a most favorable clause. The Boring Treaty meant the integration of Siam into the world economy, but at the same time, the royal house lost its most important sources of income. Similar treaties were concluded with all Western powers in the following years, such as in 1862 with Prussia and 1869 with Austria-Hungary. From the Prussian emissary Count Friedrich Albrecht zu Eulenburg comes a much-respected travel report about Siam. The survival diplomacy, which Siam had cultivated abroad for a long time, reached its climax in this epoch. The integration into the global economy meant to Siam that it became a sales market for Western industrial goods and an investment for Western capital. The export of agricultural and mineral raw materials began, including the three products rice, pewter, and teakwood, which were used to produce 90% of the export turnover. King Mongkut actively promoted the expansion of agricultural land by tax incentives, while the construction of traffic routes, canals, roads, and later also railways, and the influx of Chinese immigrants allowed the agricultural development of new regions. Subsistence farming in the lower Mainam Valley developed into farmers actually earning money with their produce. Mongkut's son, Chulalongkorn, Rama V, ascended to the throne in 1868. He was the first Siamese king to have a full Western education, having been taught by a British governess, Anna Leon Owens, whose place in Siamese history has been fictionalized as the king and I. At first, Ramavi's reign was dominated by the conservative regent, Samdet Kaya Freya Sri Surawans, 
but when the king came of age in 1873, he soon took control. He created a privy council and a council of state, a formal court system and budget office. He announced that slavery would be gradually abolished and debt bondage restricted.